So today, I'm going to show you step by step how I make one of my favorite bestsellers on my laser, which is my name signs. These are great for Mother's Day, Valentine's Day, and any other holiday you can think of. So the first step in making our sign is to type in the backing word. Now this can be anything. I've done ones that say mom, I've done ones that say family, I've done ones that say this is us, it could be really anything. For this particular sign, the customer wanted family. You can choose any font for the backing, but my typical one is Times New Roman. So you have your backing word. I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger, easier to see. And then you have your names. Now again, this will go across your family. You can also change the formats of family, so I'm gonna make this a little bit taller. So with these names, you can do any type of font that has anything in the middle of it. So I use O oh Julia Updated, but a lot of people use I Love Glitter. So the way that we do this is we actually go to the character map. At the bottom of the character map, you have all of these different letters. So with the letters, I like to find something fun to kind of start with. So this is the typical start, and the other way is the end. So I'll copy and paste that and put that in as our first letter. If it comes up with some kind of weird thing, it probably is because your font is not correct up here. So you always have to check up there too. So I will type in the first name. And then for the last letter, what I'm gonna do is go back to the character map and I want a heart between them. Again, you can do it however you want, but I think it's really cute with the heart in between them. You copy it. And then that's our first name. So I'm gonna keep going and doing the rest of the names. The next one you can actually just type in and then you'll need to do that for the next one. So let me do that real quick. Okay, from here, you wanna make sure you have all of your names spelled right. After you're happy with that, what you'll do is you'll make this a different color. I make this yet red. I make this red because that way it is easier for me to tell the difference. Then what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to stretch this across your backing word. I stretched it a little bit too far, but I actually think I wanna condense these a little bit. Again, you can distort it just like what you did with family. It's kind of like eyeballing it a little bit. You'll wanna center it. And then from there, what you are going to do is you are going to pick on this circle. It's the offset set. It's the offset shapes button. So you'll click on that. And then what you will want to do is you'll click outward. Um, you can click delete original objects sometimes, but I don't like to click on that because I want both the original and the outline there. Now, again, you just eyeball this, but this looks a little too thick for me. So I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. And again, you can just play with it until you're happy. I think that's really good. So I will click OK. Again, from there, you will want to click on the red outline, and I am going to make that black. The reason is, and I'm actually going to move this red part so it's easier, I am going to highlight everything, and then I am going to hit this square over square over square button. This will merge the two black together, so you'll see what happens. So now everything is merged together, and so that will cut out as one shape. Then I drag back my red into place. And again, you'll have to, again, play with it a little bit. Awesome. And now it's ready to send the laser. <coughs> and now it's ready to send it a laser. One more step I forgot, you wanna resize it. So the way that I tell, is I highlight everything and then I look up here at my measurements. That is way too small for what I want. This is supposed to be a 19 by six inch sign, at least for the backing part. So I wanna make this a little bit bigger. I wanna make it semi close to those measurements, at least with the width. And so I'm gonna stretch it out. Can't be more than 19. Um, I'm happy with that. So usually 18.5 is where I look for. The height is actually perfect, so that way I can have a full frame around it. Now, before you send it to the laser, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna check your settings. With your settings, the one that is on top is the one that is going to do it. 
with your settings. The one that is on top is the one that's going to happen first. You always want your engraves before your cuts because that way your engrave is not having to work around the cut. The cut is working around the engrave, if that makes sense. So we have our engrave here. And my typical engrave speed, you can go a ton faster than this, but a great one for me is actually 450, 90, and 90. I think that that's great. It works great for me. Um, you can either do fill all shapes at once or fill uh, groups together. For this particular one, it won't matter. Um, and then for our lines per inch, typically I like to have it at 0 0.7. That is 362 lines per inch. That'll give you great detail, um, but it won't take too long. So that's the benefit of this, is if you get it at 0.7, usually that's a great particular point, okay? Then the line, that is our outline. That is going to be the cut. Now, if you are doing eighth inch wood, typically I like anywhere from 24 to 30. Um, for fourth inch wood, typically I like anywhere from 10 to 15. So for this one, I'm actually going to do 12 just to make sure it cuts all the way through. I do no air compressor on the engrave, and I do the air compressor on the cut. The cut, that makes it a lot cleaner. The engrave is not necessary. In fact, it'll kind of create like a smoky look on the engrave, which I don't really like. So now it is ready to send to the laser. So it's ready to engrave. I actually put something called 3M tape on the back. This will allow me to not have to glue. I can literally just peel this paper up and it will have an adhesive back, almost like a sticker. And then I can put it directly on the wood. So let me get this in here. Okay, now we are going to try to find our place of origin. I always put my origin on the left because I feel like it's a good place for me. You go over, you hit the origin button. Next, a lot of people have an autofocus button right here. I actually took mine off because I found like it was getting bent. And so I actually prefer using the measurement tools that will come or have come with your Eon laser. So this is what mine looks like. There are actually two. I have them both here. This one is great because it has the half measurements and you want to be at eight and a half inches for the most part when you are cutting. So I'm going to measure underneath here. And it's a little high. So what I'm gonna do now is I'll come over here. I'll go to Z and then left will bring it up just a little bit. I'll go over here again and remeasure. Still a little bit high, so again, Go back over, remeasure, and that's actually just about perfect. Okay, now what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to frame your project. So I'm going to go to my project, I'm going to click on the one that it is. Perfect, it'll pull it up, great time to check your settings. Click enter a few times, and then after you hit your origin, you can hit frame. Frame will move it around to make sure it fits in the parameters of your wood. Now it's pretty close to that particular one, so I'm just gonna move it down slightly. Hit origin again, and then I'm gonna hit frame one more time. All right, I feel a little bit better with that because I'm confident that that will not hit. So, and the nice thing about this particular wood too is this is pre-finished, so I actually don't have to mask it. So I'm gonna bring this down and you can go ahead and hit start. And then you can see it going. Now, like I said before, it can actually go a lot faster than this, but I like, and you can already see it kind of coming in, that really dark engrave and that goes if you have a higher power and a lower speed and so I like it going about 450 to 90 to get that darker engrave if I wanted to get a little bit darker I could even go to 300 or 95 power but this is actually kind of the perfect balance for me personally so it's going to engrave here for a little while 
Um, I'll come back and show you guys what it looks like when it starts cutting. So it just started cutting. You can hear that in the background. That is my air compressor. That is an optional thing that you don't have to have, but it is really nice. You can see the char marks around the words that are engraved, but then you can see that drops down and that's a super clean cut. That is because of the air compressor. It makes cuts a lot cleaner, less char, and overall it's actually a little bit safer because it's kind of like putting out the fire as it's coming out. So this is a beautiful cut, I can already tell, because the pieces are dropping down like that. So I'll come back when it's done and show you guys what it looks like. And it's done. So first thing that I like to do is I like to move the red pointer out of the way. I usually hit origin just to make sure it stays there. Open up the lid. Looks great, looks like it'll come out easily. Now, with this one, because it's pre-finished, I take a wet cloth, cloth that you don't mind getting a little bit of dirt on it, so usually one that you won't use for bath time or other things anymore. Take the cloth, and you're actually, see the char? You're just gonna wipe that down, and it's gone. Look at how beautiful that looks. Awesome, char is gone. You can see, that's why you don't really wanna use that one anymore. Then I usually have the dry side. I wipe that down. Awesome, I need two hands to lift it up, so I'll show you guys what it looks like after. And it came out perfect, all of the pieces. Super easy, beautifully cut back. That'll be super easy to adhere. Now let me show you what I do with the back. So now that our back is dry, what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the a 3M tape that's on the back and then we'll put it directly on the side. It actually peels off super easy. So you can see it peels off and then it leaves like an adhesive there. So I'm gonna do that and I'll show you what the sign looks like after. So after you have that, you just wanna make sure you press down firmly on all parts of the sign. Make sure your hands are clean. You can hold them down. One of the ways that I like to check, not the best way, but I like to lift up the sign to make sure the whole sign comes up with it at all the different parts. And then I know that it's ready. There we go, there's our finished sign.